Okay, so let me take this in real quick. We do have two people showing up in this reading in the reverse. The Page of Swords, which is often um, an air sign, so Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And then also the King of Cups, who um, is a water sign, so Cancer, Scorpio. Pisces energy and they're both in the reverse and they're right next to each other So I get this feeling like they may be working together against you or they may be working together and you um, You're like a third party to them. So it could be in relationship You could be the person on the side and you don't know it or but more so like the Page of Swords energy is young, is very young So this could be a child and then the King of Cups an adult so you could be seeing somebody who has a child, or it could be your partner if you have a child with them. But also, I, I do see this dynamic at work where it's like you're working with someone maybe over a project you, you adore, or you are working with a project with two other people, and they see eye to eye, but you don't see eye to eye with either of them. And the thing is, is they're in the reverse. So they're not working in their highest energy. They're actually working kind of in a conniving, deceitful way. Like the page of swords, um, you know, might just call you names and be really immature and, um, you know, be like, oh, are you a slowy slow poke? You know, like that is what a five-year-old would say. And we're working at a corporation. So, you know, this page of swords you could find really annoying. And then the king of cups energy could be really moody, could be um, emotionally all over the place, could be really like, oh, I love you. You were such a great person. And then flip on you the next minute and be like, why don't you care about me? You always, you're never there for me, you know? Yeah, the King of Cups are very, they're moody people. They're very, very moody. And they don't, it, the thing is, is a lot of times they don't see it and they don't get it that they're being moody because they're just kind of ebbing and flowing with the tides of their emotion. But the reason why these two are the first thing I focused on is just what is around them, you know, what is around them here. We have death, three of pentacles reversed, the world, and six of cups. And so you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to make some decisions on how much influence they have in, in your life. How much influence they're going to have in your future. And if what they have to say really reflects who you are. Okay, three of pentacles. You know, they could be saying some really vicious things about you, about like your work and say, and they're not true. But are you going to take that in? Are you going to take that in as truth and then move on with that? Or are you going to put up a boundary, but, you know, between you and these people who are not working in your best interest? And you have choices there because they're going to give you some, some chances to get out of that situation or to lessen your interaction with them. And it's going to be up to you to jump on that. You know, instead of, you know, I do feel like some Sagittarius people are going to feel like they have something to prove, like they can handle these two. And so they're going to be like, no, I'm not stepping out. I'm going to, you know, you Sagittarius, you guys are going to, you know, try to puff up your feathers and be like, I'm not stepping down. But is this worth it? Because with the death card here, it's like, that's not in your best interest. This is this is a Scorpio card. This is a Pluto card. You know, death being here is like, yeah, no, look a little deeper. Like, it's not, this is not what it's truly on the surface. Even though you're working with them and maybe you can make a lot of money, even a bonus or whatever, look underneath that and see it for the truth that this is just a little immature baby and that this is an overgrown baby. <laughs> And if you put all your focus into this situation, then you're going to lose out on other people who, who are ready to, to exit your life if you don't show them some, some attention. Knight of Staffs. You know, and this is a fellow fire sign. So Sagittarius, Leo. Um, who am I missing? Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. Like there's somebody here who wants your attention, who's worthy of it. And so you need to step up into that. And saying, oh my gosh, you're awesome. I'm so sorry. I've been so sidetracked with some, some babies. <laughs> you 
you know, and they have, there's a future with them. There's a future with them that and there's this connection. It's like you look in their eye and it's like zap. Yeah. You know, it's passionate. It's energetic. You feel alive with them. And if uh, you're in a really solid relationship, and so you're not even in this realm of looking for somebody, this is you. This is a knight of staffs. This is you. Fire. You know, get out of that situation so you can start a new beginning. And you have to take those steps to get to your future, to get to the world. Which is like, this is the end and the beginning, you know? 21. And I love that the world right here is linked with the Wheel of Fortune, okay? Like you have to take, you have to see the Knight of Staffs is turning their back on all of this. Turning their back on what is happening here with this malarkey, with these two people. And going off on their own adventure. You have to let this die. Okay? So that you can come down to the Wheel of Fortune. So that you can come down to your um, your Jupiter, your expansion. We also have the Three of Cups, and this is linked to um, the World and Wheel of Fortune, and also the Three of Pentacles, too. And the, I, I can totally see why it's linked here, because you have to, once again, create that boundary, because they're going to try to sway you out of your future, you know, these two people. They're going to say, no, you can't do it. You're not worth it. You need us. You need us to be successful. And you can't take that in. You have to let that go in order to get to your, your joy and your wheel of fortune and your celebration. And I do want to put a spin on this, too, that it's not just work. I do feel like for a lot of you guys that it's going to be in a work situation. But this could be in a, a family dynamic. Like, this could be sisters, a sister and brother. This could be um, mother, father, uh, you know, who are just breathing down your neck on what you need to be and who you, I'm sorry, who you need to be and what you need to do. So just pay attention to um, if you start to feel smaller, if you start to feel like, well, I can't do it. No, I'm not good enough. Figure out and like take stock in that. And be like, where did I, where did that come from? Where did that self doubt come from? Who seeded that within me? Bing, 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 page of swords, king of cups. This could be a spouse and a child, you know, this could be your, your husband, wife and your son or daughter. Not saying that they're bad and that you need to like cut them out, but you do need to sometimes create boundaries even in the family setting so that they do not rule over your soul. Okay, so we're going to pull from the Mother Wisdom deck for some added guidance. Mountain Presence. The same cards keep popping up in the Mother Wisdom deck. I'm pretty sure another sign got this. Mountain. All right, let me read you just a tidbit from it. But stay strong like a mountain. You know, in the presence, this really speaks to um, also the collective reading of looking forward. Children live like the Buddha. For them, the present moment is the only moment. They embrace what life offers breath by breath. One moment a child may be a wash in tears and the next chasing a butterfly. With each experience of the present, we too have the opportunity to be more fully alive. Where are you in the here and now? Are you worrying about a note that came home from your son? Or have you escaped into a fantasy of another kind of life? If so, Mum asks, that you return to the present. Presence gives us a much needed still point. Shifting seasons and fleeting lives circle mountains immovable mass. Her sure center serves as a world axis connecting the earthly plane to the heavenly realm. Around the world, mountains inspire worship and demand mindfulness. When you draw this card, let presence become your practice. The ascent of mountain steep slope serves as a walking meditation. 
If you are not present, you will slip and fall. If you fixate on conquering the peak, you will miss the flowers along the trail. Cultivating an awareness of each step allows anxieties to drift away. By the time you reach the top, a, rare, a rarefied silence will quell any lingering agitation poised between heaven and earth. This is the best place to fall in love with presence, your own divine beingness that exists only in the now. Okay, but we have the Queen of Pentacles, and they're, you know, the center of the remainder of November. So this is an Earth sign Virgo, uh, Taurus, Capricorn energy. And since I picked this extra card, the gift, I really feel like they're a gift to you. You know, they're going to kind of help you in um, connecting yourself to a new beginning, a financial wealth beginning, um, something that, you know, could create... Uh, a new future for you. But however, the only way that this is going to come in is if you don't stand idle with fear. Okay, the Nine of Swords is looking at fear, taking it, um, you know, being right in front of it and dealing with it instead of standing frozen. Don't freeze up, you know, unless you're planning, you know, take time to plan. I love planning. I have a lot of Virgo. Uh, but the Nine of Swords is like, you can't freeze in the face of fear. And the Queen of Pentacles, I think, may be offering you a situation, a new job, a new relationship that will lead to a plethora of abundance. But you have to take the first step. You know, Nine of Swords. You, even though you're scared, you're going to have to quit that job. Even though you're scared, you're going to have to finish that project and move on. Um, you know, Ten of Swords is, it's an ending. There's something happening in career and work. And if you listen to my November reading for you, then you would have known that I focused a lot about work and relationships within the work environment. And so this is saying, yeah, it's time to let it go. Something's not working. You got to cut ties so that you can have this gift come in. And I know it's going to be hard because in relationship, there's some people who are, don't have your back, who are not like, okay, you know, follow your heart, follow your dream, go for it. They're like, why the hell would you leave such a good job? You've got benefits. It's nine to five. It's easy to do. Why would you leave it? You are, you're throwing away a good situation. And, you know, th there's always going to be somebody who's against you. There's always going to be somebody who's against what you believe and what you need to happen in your life. Now, with this, though, as you are leaving, this is the Virgo in me talking to you. And maybe I am your queen of pentacles right now, you know, <laughs> like go for it. However, make a plan. However, when you leave, don't leave willy-nilly and be like, oh, I'm just going to leave it. Come 100% up to Source. You know, Source gave you a body. Source gave you a mind. Sor source gave you a heart and intellect. Use it. Okay? When people say, it, it does kind of drive me crazy when people are like, I'm just going to leave it up to God. You know, if this is your life and God gave you this beautiful vessel and gave you this beautiful heart and this beautiful mind and this beautiful spirit, how dare you not use it? How dare you stand idly by and just be almost hmm, passive, be, uh, I, I hate to say it, lazy? God didn't give you this vessel to sit around. God gave you this vessel to make a change, make a positive shift for you and around everyone around you. So don't slap God in the face by saying, I leave it to you. I'm not going to do anything. No, step up. Listen, listen to your heart. You know, I always say that. Listen to your spirit. Let God guide you into action. Okay, that is so important. That's why this gift is popping up. You have been given this gift of you, this gift of um, being. What are you going to do with it? Because you have a new beginning happening, but if you're too scared to look it in the face and actually take the first step forward, it will be taken away from you. 
All right, so let's call on the angel cards just to wrap it up and bring it all together. Archangel Michael, yeah. All right. You're working very closely with this powerful archangel who's protecting and guiding you through this situation. You have guidance. You have protection. Go for it, Sagittarius. 